Microsoft is calling Copilot the most powerful productivity tool on the planet. And Microsoft Copilot Studio is how you create custom Copilots. But considering that you clicked on this video, you probably already know both of these two things. But what you don't know is that Microsoft Copilot Studio is tricky to say the least. After all, I am a power platform consultant where I have developed several co-pilots for different clients with different purposes. And I wanted to share my experience and all the things that I wish I knew sooner before I started so that you don't have to rip your hair out. So if you don't know at this point in time, Microsoft Copilot Studio is less than a year old at this point, which is not a knock. It just means that there's not a ton of Microsoft documentation and kind of community content out there available for you to reference. I guess I'm just trying to say that at times when I was building these co-pilots, it felt like there was nothing out there to help me and I was just going insane. It felt like all I could do was just figure it out on my own. So in this video, I wanted to highlight the four main kind of tips and tricks, the things that I wish I knew before I started making my first Copilot in Copilot Studio. And number one is understand that Copilot at this point in time is buggy. I really try hard to not be a super negative person, but at the same time, it's really hard to say that Copilot Studio at this point in time is a great co-pilot development tool. I would get errors that had zero explanation or zero reason as to why I was having them. In conversation notes where I'd try to use an adaptive card, it would just clear my adaptive card content for no reason. When I would try to deploy my co-pilot to an upper environment, there would be random settings that just turn off, which don't even get me started about the deployment process because there are so many nuances and little settings that seem to be, to be missed that it almost feels like it's half-baked. Anyway, I, I think what makes this in particularly tough, especially for me, is like I said at the beginning, there's just not a ton of documentation out there or content that you can reference. I think this would be a great moment to ask you to subscribe. But long story short, let me just say, if you are gonna be developing a co-pilot in Copilot Studio, just know that it likely will not always be smooth sailing. If you feel like you're going crazy as to why Microsoft Copilot or why the custom Copilot you're developing is not doing what it should be doing, you're not alone. Number two on our list today is actually you need to change your approach and how you're developing co-pilots and co-pilot conversations. My first approach to building these co-pilots relied really heavily on outlining the questions and the messages I wanted the co-pilot to send all within the canvas itself. The problem is, is if you rely too heavily on this experience, then you're effectively just building a chatbot and not a generative AI chatbot. I found that it's actually a lot better and easier to use things like topic inputs and outputs to gather the information that you need. When you set up topic inputs, you can define the variables that you want this topic to capture, as well as defining the actual question you want Copilot to use if it needs to gather information about this variable. Then in your canvas, if you had say a call a Power Automate flow action that required this variable, before doing so, Copilot will ask the question that you defined in the topic inputs. One note on this is you do need to make sure that your Copilot is set up to be utilizing the generative AI settings and capabilities in order to utilize this kind of generative AI topic triggering and the topic inputs. You cannot use the classic version, which also means that at this point in time and recording, this would only be viable for English speaking co-pilots, but Microsoft has communicated that the languages will continue to expand and include more and more. Check out the Microsoft documentation down in the description down below to check and see if your language is currently supported or not. But essentially what I'm trying to say is if you are building out your co-pilot and putting everything into the canvas screen here, then you probably are building it wrong. And do not be discouraged because that's exactly what I was doing at first and is the reason why I'm making this video. I will say too, if you have additional questions about topic input specifically, I'll be sure to provide a link to that video at the end of this video for you to check out. Number three on our list is understand that Microsoft is constantly updating the product. So let me go ahead and just 
tell you a story. It's a Friday. I'm building a co-pilot. Me and my team get the co-pilot to a place where it's working and good to go. And we're like, all right, let's, you know, let's log off for the weekend. It's the end of the Friday workday. To our surprise, we log back on Monday morning and now the co-pilot is not working. And specifically it was habitually repeating itself just over and over and over again. After spending a fair amount of time trying to figure out why this co-pilot experience was happening, we determined that Microsoft had pushed an update to Copilot or Microsoft Copilot Studio that introduced this bug. By Wednesday, the bug had quit happening and we were in high spirits, but come Monday, the bug was reintroduced. Look, I get it and understand that Copilot Studio needs to be updated and it's a new product, so there's, there's gonna be updates made to it. But in my experience, in what happened to me and on several different occasions is it just felt like Microsoft was making my job harder or they were pushing updates to make it better without actually vetting that it's working. They introduced a change into the generative capabilities of the co-pilot that literally broke the co-pilot I was building and supposed to be delivering very soon. Now, thankfully, this was not the end of the world. Like me and my team, we were able to figure out what was going on and get to the bottom of it. But it's important for you to know that this could happen to you. My fourth and final tip piece of advice would be to get to know the code view. This is kind of the final piece of advice that I wish I knew was there sooner. What the code view does is it just actually shows you the actual HTML that your copilot is digesting and that is breaking out all the conditional logic or actions or conversation nodes that you've built out. And I'm not telling you to start building your co-pilots in this view, but I will say I think it's super beneficial for resolving errors or setting up custom connections. Or for some people, building out expressions and conditional logic might be easier in this experience. Just take this as like your formal PSA public service announcement that if you want to look at the nitty gritty details of your co-pilot, you can. I can say with confidence that now that you know these four things, you are going to be on the right track when it comes to developing co-pilots. As promised, here is the video that talks about everything you need to know regarding topic inputs. Thank you for sticking to end the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer channel, and I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.